Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Magic Arena Run. Today, well, Post Malone's having a concert and actually, but aside from the concert part, um, we are celebrating that we, he's also celebrating the event by giving us, well, some free, a free event for Arena. So this is the concert event. We have, um, th this is Brawl. I believe it's Historic Brawl. Let's do a double check. Yeah, Historic Brawl, 100 cards. And a lot of goodies here. So um, we're taking a look at um, what everyone's saying is actually quite good. It's the Red White Fi Song of Sun Fire. So it's a Fire Song and Sun Speaker deck. The main premise on of this deck is that um, it is that um, the your Red Instant and Sorcery spells you control have Life Link, and your and your White Instant and Sorceries um, if they cause you to gain life, you get to deal damage. So looking over the so it's interesting for cards like um deafening well deafening clarion doesn't really count actually no it it will count um it will give it life link and it will kind of cause you to gain wait actually if i'm not miss yeah i think the interactions is supposed to cause you to gain life but there is uh i know there's a caveat here i think it's supposed to actually say gain life I know some people were saying that there seems to be a weird interaction with this. I know there is an interaction issue here that I'm not getting. But otherwise, um, we have a lot of a lot of burn, a lot of um lot of and, and a lot good amount of incidental life gain. Pretty much the payoffs for life gain are let's see, the Dawn of Hope. Ethereal Escort really re really good here. Heliod's also a good um payoff here. Resplendent Angel is a good payoff. Um, cleric class um, also a payoff that's much more longer term we do have Sarah Paragon to buy back a lot of our stuff although most of our two and three drops are damp and this only gets up to three drops so what are the realistic cards we're getting Plarg yeah kind of weird we're not actually getting much though we it's a good way to rebuy as resplendent angel heliod ethereal escort etc so Sarah Paragon, a bit of a weird inclusion here. But then again, this spell, this deck is mostly spell based. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, seventeen creatures, twenty six instants and sorceries, and and a Johnny. So this is definitely one of the decks to look out for. Next, we got um, Mono Green Avant Guard Bard. So this one is run based on based around Eliwick. So for those who don't remember playing her. It's a um, four mana, four, four loyalty planeswalker. You get to venture into dungeon. Look at the top six cards. Reveal a creature card you put in your hand. So a little card draw. If it's legendary, you gain three life. And there's an and there's an emblem for plus two, plus two for each different named dungeon you completed. As well as trample and haste. So let's see. Yeah, we got Varys for additional um, dungeon venturing. I believe... And there aren't that many ways to venture into the dungeon outside of those two, so something to consider. But otherwise, this is a very solid, looks like a very consistent um, mono green deck, true and true. Um, Silverback Elder, um, it, you definitely want to hit your top end if if possible, so do pay attention to that. We do get um, land or elves. No Elvish Mystic, though. Druid of the Call. So a lot of r mana ramp to help us get here, something to keep in mind. And you got green and blue scale. Haha, <laughs> blues, get it? So this one actually not, not the mythic or rare. rare. This one's Corlesa Scale Singer. So you may cast dragon spells off the top of your library, which is really neat. Though we, until you realize that we're missing red. So, so we're not getting the best out of dragons, but we do have a decent selection of dragons. Looking at the top part of your library at any time kind of helps a bit. But otherwise, let's see, Faceless Agent, Dragon Horde, Mask Vandal. So we are getting a bunch of um, changelings to come along with this. Skilled Nurture is a dragon. Lons? Okay. So wait, wait to chew drop stuff. We get both orbs of dragon kind, at least the ones relevant to this deck. Arcane Adaptation, this is one way to ch turn everything into dra dragons. Fire action metamorph also a good way. Our big dragon payoffs are pretty much well ancient bronze dragon, though it's a bit old knobbone is a really good one. Ancient silver dragon's a good one. Earthquake dragon also counts as well. 
Then we have spells that couple. So this is some blue red spells. And this one's rooted around Ruta. You see what I did there? Mercurial Artist. So um, three mana, one four, but um, she's basically a uh, she's basically a galvanic iteration on a stick. We don't actually get we don't get actual galvanic iteration, but we do get increasing vengeance. And so this is pretty much um, predicated on casting lots of spells. To what end, you may ask? Let's see. I believe um, some of the, the payoffs here are like experimental overload. Experimental overloads one payoff. Let's see. Crackling Drake is another payoff here. Mm, I did. I didn't see. I don't see a haughty Jin. What? What gives? Too powerful. Mirai Conjecture is a nice. Lier is a good way to buy stuff back. Metallurgical Summonings is a is a good payoff here. Najal likewise helps. Thousand Year Storm is probably the main payoff for this deck, but um, there are a lot of ways to get there. Also, Ro also Ro will Rowan and Will. Nice, nice idea. And finally, Devil's Interval, Black Red. Actually, I've been hearing a lot of good stuff. I also noticed quite a lot of red as well, so. Be careful of the removal, I'd say. So, Rakdos the Showstopper. When he enters the battlefield, flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp. Destroy those creatures when... So, 50% chance of destroying them. You kind of guessed it. Almost every creature is a devil, demon, or imp. Then there are a few exceptions to it, though. Um, notable inclusions would be Obnixilis. There is going to be a lot of um, sacrificing and whatnot. There's the Liliana's Contract. I believe there's supposed to be another... Contract was oh well, since being contracts we got Davriel Soul Broker as well. Demon. I know there is a, yeah this is Liliana's contract is the main is probably the alternate win con here but otherwise beating face is still pretty good. Last time I checked. We'll start. We'll start left to right. We'll start with the Song of Sun and Fire. I heard a lot of good things about this one. We'll see if they we'll, we'll see if they are actually any good here. Hmm. Speaking of any good, I kind of probably should modify the camera a bit. Okay, so decent start, turn two Guardian Idol, Sacred Fire if we need to. We don't have the mana for Resplendent Angel, which is a bit annoying, nor do we have for Cigar the Summons. I'm tempted to mulligan this, but the deck isn't quite, this deck not, not so quite heavy on the high mana cost card, so we'll see if we can draw into anything that's not a, that is not a mo another mountain. Please, we need some white sources here. When it does, it's going to run turn two core let oh, the chlorohedron. Well, you know what they say, burn if you can. So we will, with Cold Steel Heart, we will get our white mana one way or another. So that's some good news there. Fortune, unfortunately, these two ETB taps, so we are not running them one after the other. Maybe our opponent drops Coralesa this time? No, oh, yep, they dropped the core less at this time. Okay, we actually did hit the other white mana. I guess we will go for Resplendent Angel now. Opponent playing green blue. I'm trying to remember what the removal suite they have is, but I know they're more focused on landing dragons. And they also missed their land drop, so that is probably going to be an issue here. We're going to swing first, see if our opponent um, does anything to our Resplendent Angel. Sword Coast Serpent returns to the two owner's hand. Sure. So, note your life total. Draw a card if your life total is greater than or equal to the noted life total. When you cast a... Hmm. So, we're going to note white again. Yeah, we're gonna go for the more mana efficient play. Also, we kind of want to take a little bit of damage early on, rather than just dumping, dumping cigar the summons way too soon. Opponent drops Selvala, so actually that's a big thank you because um we will drop a creature that it 
we will drop a creature that is bigger. Unless the opponent... Yeah, the opponent might want to... Yes, I definitely want to resolve. And I definitely want to take action. Thank you for the card. We also have Velomachus lower hold. So yeah, we tap the double white. It's so tempting to try to run out Fire Song Song's Beak, but um, we're gonna try to nuke their card advantage ASAP right now because we know they're having a hard time hitting their mana. Opponent concedes. So there, there we go. Once we nuke that one off pretty early, it's over. Well, so not a, not a very um, spectacular win, but a win is a win, I guess. Knowing when your opponent's in trouble and taking advantage of them, that's always a good place to start. Let's um, check out the uh, let's claim our prize, which is pretty nice. Now I believe that one goes for goes with the planes. Anyway, we'll check up. Let's go. Let's go next. Let's go a bit avant guard. Again, this one should be more straightforward. We we didn't get to run fire songs on speaker last time because um the game ended a bit too way too early. I think our next play afterwards would have been that. Don't be afraid to throw burn at your opponent, uh, um, uh, at your opponent's creatures if it wrecks their board state. Though no, speaking of which, let's see. Okay, we. This is a bit awkward, but we can run this through. ETB tapped. If our opponent plays any of their mana rocks, we. We will go Kappa Tech Wrecker. Also, because of we know what's... Okay, no, Cleric Class, so no Mana Rock. And we are starting to draw our mana again. I am so tempted to just run the Tech Wrecker right now. Um, Sniper Cleric Class ASAP. Yeah, let's give them... If they have Burn, let's give them a target for it. Also, because I noticed um, not much removal on the one mana slot, Again, these are not super powered. We might get, we, we might convince our opponent to throw one of their burn spells here, which is uh, quite fine. Do we want to play Dukamina quite early? Probably not. Yeah. That was quite predictable. Oh, you, there is a dungeon descent. You need to tap and untap legendary creatures. Let's keep that in mind. So actually with the setup, we can play Dungeon Descent, play Lucamina. We can only activate Sorcery, so I will have to give up Paradise Druid Ace as soon as possible if I want to go for it. Opponent also, well, you do need 4 mana to go for this anyway, so I guess that's fine. We could also just run out the... Uh... Ooh. If our opponent taps out so that um, they don't have removal, we can also... Okay. We unfortunately don't have the third forest, so we're gonna take a risk here. We're going to we're gonna go through the door, play the land, and step. We probably want to. Yeah, we probably want to start completing this. Okay, do we want another forest? Technically, we can get away with just Dungeon Descent Cavalier, so we can kind of skip the forest. Yeah, we'll skip the f we'll skip the forest. And I'm already assuming that we're losing the Paradise Druid. Opponent does have a Deafening Clarion, though might be a little bit off. I think our opponent goes goes ahead for Fire Song Sun Speaker, which is an issue here. Yeah, they're going for it right away. So I kind of want to wait for six lands, bef then drop Lucamina. So we. Okay. So we could cast the Leafkin Druid, but um, I know there's a definite Clarion in the deck, so we're not gonna go for it. I'm just gonna keep um doing the mini venture. Uh, treasure token. 
Yeah, we'll do the treasure token. We, I am considering the possibility of doing the minus four, minus zero. Also, I need to do a double check. We're automatically in bear form here. We can go for it. Luca Mina. Oh, wow. Now I know why they were saying that the green mythic that wrecks artifacts is pretty good here. I agree as well. If, if, this, if these are the cards we're getting, I, this would also explain why everyone wanted the Fire Song Sunspeaker deck. So we should expect one big turn. Yeah, we will definitely go Lucamina. They did, they did throw away the Trilling Discovery. Okay, so definitely play a land that will um, trigger a Troubadour. Hold on, then this one is one and tap. I am actually gonna ditch the Green Seeker here. Then. So we're gonna see if our opponent's gonna... Yeah, I'm expecting them to do the cheap block here. No, no biggie. And that should give us our final adventure. And you gotta complete the dungeon. Torn Mammoth's a very solid option here. Also snipes Fire Songs on Speaker if our opponent doesn't buff it somehow. <sighs> so definitely going for... Also, let's do a double check on... that dungeon ability, though... Until your next turn, un oh, until my next turn. So uh, oddly enough, if our opponent's able to take an extra turn, say with Time Warp, they, they, they'll they still be stuck with the zero six 6 Fire Song Sun Speaker. I think our opponent is looking for a way to blow through with damage. Um, Star of Extinction would be really brutal. I don't remember if it's actually in the, if that's actually in the deck. I saw, I saw someone post it. Oh, someone did have the Star of Extinction. Ooh, wow, nice. So we definitely want to target because um this one is really neat. This one is just as anno but this one is also just as annoying. I guess we go Maze and Forerunner. Yeah, take action. Our battle is sure to inspire. Ah, oh, I just love a good quest. We probably need to start drawing more cards, but I am, we are going to be have to prepare for the long game. Also. We can pitch the leaf. We can. Yeah, we need to keep making sure that Lucamina is transformed at all times because this is going to be a long battle. Our inability to actually take this out was an issue, but we might. We we are going to be in here for the long haul, and that means any big creature from our opponent is going to be an issue. So we're going to want to hold on to the. To Torn Mammoth for as long as possible. If our opponent goes for Fire Song Sunspeaker again, Torn Mammoth down. And we're just gonna, and we're gonna keep venturing as much, and we're gonna keep venturing as much as possible as well. So, our opponent's saving grace is that they literally have forever. Want creature cards, but not quite yet. I hope we discover something new. We'll 
they weren't. We'll take Clex. We'll take the Clex Master. What? Also, kind of. Well, they were justified in in wiping the board at that point. I'm already trying to think what other potential board wipe do they have since they already played Shatter Skull. What red X spells? I should have paid more attention to the deck. And that also means I really want to play these guys first before ru before running this one if possible. So basically, I want this for max value. Solar Blaze. Yeah, I forgot them. So they did have another board wipe. Do they have a way to eat the card from my graveyard also? Because it's it is going it is awkward if I have to. Let's see, venture. Venture create the treasure token. I think I can venture create the treasure token. Pitch and raise four runners. Go for Warren Flex instead. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Opponent did burn a time out. Yeah, they're just gonna level up. They don't, they don't actually have much of anything. There are so many things to see. Really? Yeah, we're giving up the end, end race for runners. So the road is very long here. We're, but that was already two board, two board wipes. I'm actually trying to. No, we actually also misplayed this a bit. We should have. We should have also um, played this first before plus oneing Ellie Wick. That would have given her. Well, that was a good call. I did, I did expect them to have yet another board wipe. So we're just running them out of board wipes, and they do need to start drawing cards because. Oh yeah, th this one would have come from the key to the archive. So that was their last out. Do they have a burn spell to finally take out Lucamina? Also, if they were to plus, they would only get back Palladium Mirror. Yeah, the lack of creatures is a bit of an issue here. Generally, that's why you want the Trilling Discovery to throw some in the yard. I'm tempted to do the plus two, but I really need to keep venturing into the dungeon, especially since now that um, my two other usual ways of um, venturing are gone. So we're... Well, there's still one more, Varys. I just need to actually draw into the poor guy. Hoof is actually nice, so we will bend the forest. We actually also misplayed that. We probably wanted to seek the non-land card first before before going into the venture. We do have, technically have all the mana to pretty much play, play whatever card we exile, so that's something to keep in mind. <laughs> the bear just would not die. Gotta love the value bear. Still need a lot more creatures though. But yeah, we're gonna keep going for the incidental advantage. Oh, arcane bombardment. Ooh, that's actually very, very annoying. So they could, 
If they get Star of Extinction again, oh, that will actually kill Eliwick. So, you know, thankfully, okay, Azure's Gateway, not quite there yet. They can draw an Exile from hand, so that is an option. So knowing that, we're probably not going to play Crater Hoof right away. In fact, knowing that, we probably want to, we probably want to Emblem Ellie Wick. Because there is a chance that um, one of the cards they hit off the Exile is Star of Extinction, that would be super annoying. Although, by doing the Emblem, we actually open ourselves up to rip a card as well. So, that's, but that, by that reasoning, we are going to Sandbag Crater Hoof Behemoth. We're just going to seek cards, see if we hit anything worth playing. Also, the Emblem kind of stacks, if we can keep going at it. Yeah, we're in for the long haul, my friend. I'm never going to give up. Never going to give you up. Hopefully, you don't let me down. Oh, wow. I think our friend... No, nope, friend's back. This is the magic we've composed together. Okay, so we're going to actually seek first. Might as well crack... Use it now with... Tangle Florahedron. Okay, we're gonna sandbag that. Cause um Cause our creatures will have haste anyway because of the emblem. Also Also we need to I forgot Ooh, the pitch insult to injury. Okay, so this one just adds well a lot more mana than our opponent can ever use. And I know the X burn spell is in the blue red deck, so that's not the out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Our opponent's missing one mana to cast Fire Song Sun Speaker again, though it's though we've already kind of had it have it handled. Yeah, if our opponent doesn't answer Eliwick, we're gonna keep on chugging. Opponent also ended up playing a bunch of these spells as lands. I guess they really did need it earlier, so that would... Aether Flux Reservoir. Oh. Okay, that's a good game. And they can activate it anytime, so... no, There's no point keeping it. Oh, you're gonna keep it? Sure. Let's see. Let's see if our opponent at... Yeah, let's exile top two top two cards. Yeah, there's no defense against that, but heck, we survived a lot of other stuff. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll play the other card as well. That gives us an 8-9 case. Yeah, we're probably dead anyway, but what the hey. If it's a creature card in your hand, otherwise put in your life. Yeah, I know, but I, I'm not. We'll see what it is. Just out of curiosity. You you have to be the one to end me. I'm sure you remember it's any target. Just end me now. Sure. Okay, he does have leftovers, so that's fine. Uh, graveyard. Let's see if our opponent. <clears throat> Life Crafters, Bestiary. Yeah, sure, let's put. Doesn't go into hand. Might, might as well. Sw well, we're not swinging with everything. Reason being that we still actually want to keep uh, um, strategically, we still want to keep Eliwick. Also, even if I swung with both and he didn't block, he would still have some life left over. Sure, does he remember to not target me? Or it could be a bug. 
I think our was our opponent trying to target us already. That just gives us a scry tree, though we can kind we can com we can combo it with um life crafters bestiary, though we think six, seven hmm. So let's see, we played this, that leaves us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we won't be able to draw a card. Let's play this first. Yeah, our opponent should remember to target us at this point. And if we lose Ellie Wick now, it's fine. I'm pretty sure our opponent remembers to target us. Oh no! You know, something is really wrong if, or it could be our opponent actually not wanting to hit us with that. I don't know what happened. We were supposed to... Between the Star of Extinction, we're, we're technically dead twice over. But you know what? Thank you very much for letting us finish, for not actually pulling the trigger. I do not... I don't know if it's your compassion, but, well... It will forever be immortalized. Or maybe we will be expecting to see a bug report soon. Anyway, enough of the enough of the bard. Let's go to another bard. Again, this one is more dragon centric. It's relying on the card advantage from playing Corliss uh, er, early. I, actually, not a bad play. A, it has enough toughness, so to speak. I think the it's only a it, it, it would serve as a blocker against the mono green deck. The black red deck is probably the one that can deal with it easily. I think even the blue red deck needs some extra help. But anyway, we are keeping this. Our, we are going first. We might just go Forsaken Crossroads blue. Opponent does take an early mulligan, takes another mulligan. Takes yet another mulligan. And you can actually see the people pop re repopulating the, the the arena every time your opponent mulligans. It's as if, ah, oh, the show's canceled. Let's go, go. Hey, the show's coming back. Let's all run in. Ah, show's getting canceled. Anyway, opponent does take all them, all them mulligans. Yeah, we'll go with explore play. I actually want to take the. I actually want to take the hit early now. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I actually remembered there are a good number of some artifacts here. So there's actually a home. There's actually a reason to run Boseju. That said, yeah, I kind of ideally want to run Skilled Nurture first before I go Faceless Agent. But there might be a world where, yeah, if I, if I don't draw another land, I will play this. And we'll get another blue source because we know we have another red source in hand. No, we did hit the land. Yeah, we're gonna go for the quick ramp right here. So, yeah, scaled nurture. We'll see if our opponent has the burn for this. If they do, that's one less burn spell for us to worry about. We can just we can just do scanners or paradise faceless agent. 
Corlesa Faceless Agent also an option. Actually, I might like the Corlesa play though. Although the ones I really want are at the top end. Yeah, also no I don't see a reason to run out scanners right away. Only going Ruta, so Okay, do we go for the lonely sandbar? Because yeah, when it's when it's attacks. I talk myself out of it. I actually do want to cast this now. Wait a minute. Oh, you, yeah, I, I did gain the two life. Okay. So, probably. We'll play Cordessa. If we. Nope, no land on top. I don't need the guard engineer right away, so I might actually just play it as a land. No, so there is a bit of. So, we do get to run on Kyrie, which is actually quite a big deal. Yeah, I kind of also let's see Scanus's version, so vigilance and a big boost. Flying and giving another creature flying also reasonable. Opponent mm. having to take out our poor faceless agent. We probably could go yeah, the guard engineer is an issue. I might just end up going Kyrie Paradise Druid at this point. Also, their opponent pitch Trill and Fires. If they're pitching Trill, that means something's wrong. Yeah, it looks like our opponent's also stuck on mana. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If I want to go for the one to play, it's Scanus Druid. I also kind of want to play Kyrie just to start sealing the game. I could swing. Yeah, I'm gonna swing at Cordessa this time. Also, the War Tree helps in that our opponent needs to have a one mana bounce spell, and I think there might be a few. But it's gonna be, a, it'll have to be a bounce spell to back bypass the War Tree, so that's pretty much our game plan here. Can we outward our opponent? Can, can, is the ward good enough to wreck our opponent? Also, as far as you know, gutter snipe, okay, that's a plan. Now this does not work on copies. Oh, we also got a Jacob Hawken. Yeah, not enough mana to specialize. We're gonna play the we're gonna play the guy engineer as a as a bait. But our opponent has been stuck on mana for quite a while that it's actually that for our opponent it's probably not funny. They're now starting to draw their lands. So we mission briefing. Okay, we take two. What are they buying back? I suspect they're buying back either the Prismari Command or the Trill of Possibility. Well, Pris Trill of Possibility does the same thing, so they're gonna buy back Prismari Command. They'll They'll snipe the Gar Engineer. That's this was the bait. It's basically better than them sniping our face in that regard. They also pitched the channel force. Do they have the land? No, they pro they're going for this. Oh no, they pitched the channel force because they don't have the land. That that's that's more likely. What am I saying? Am I just tired? Yeah, I'm kinda tired. Played a few games of Pokemon Unite. Finally made it to Ultra. And opponent finally takes out the Scale Nurture. So we're gonna have to... No, no more secure life gain strats here. Jacob Hawken... Draw card and XL card face down. And what's this? You may pay... Mm, I think more realistically, we're going to just pitch Hawk Jacob. Mm. 
Yeah, cause looks like flying is an issue, so we're gonna we're gonna make it worse for our opponent. So we're X is kind of just power, so 6, 10, 11, plus 4, 15. Okay, let's see what our opponent's out is. It will have... Do they have... I need to double check the blue red deck because I'm going to be doing this one next. Do, does it have a board wipe? Murmuring Mystic. Do they have an instant to. No, they don't. Yeah, we just um, show off the old knob bone off the top. Well, that. That was actually brutal for our opponent. They, they kept it. They mulliganed quite aggressively, actually. I think they took three mulligans. They, they, the free mulligan did not help them. The other two didn't. It took the third one to help them. I'm actually, you know, I would, what I would give to see what our opponent kept. No, what our opponent mulligan, mulliganed. Would, would those have been better hands? Generally, I suspect the answer is no. But anyway, let's do a quick check on board wipes. Because, yeah, if I remembered correctly, this deck does not have any. Okay. There's Giants Immolating Inferno, kind of a board wipe. Shatter Skull Smashing. So we're kind of relying on these two if we need to clear multiple creatures off the site. This actually scares me as a as a deck. Anyway, let's go. Let, let's go for this. I'm actually still thinking now. Yeah, I think our opponent really did just give us the win. That earlier opponent gave us the win. Yeah, I can see why you would mulligan quite aggressively here. There are many possible dead hands. This one... Yes, I will keep this because we have a You Find Some Prisoners. This, pro, this might get us some action off our opponent's deck. But I will admit, it is awfully scary. So, we do have an island. And we have to give up this and we have to give up um this spell. Which is a bit concerning considering this is the mono green big creature deck. I really want to know now what does it take for this deck to win? Thankfully our opponent also not having the fastest of starts. We actually have the option to trill discard thousand year storm. Or discard increasing vengeance then I probably would discard the Increasing Vengeance. Opponent goes Crawl Harpooner. I kind of want to just... Yeah, I kind of want to just pitch. Hey, lightning bolt's a good spell, and we and we are drawing our land, so that's some that's something. Also, this one is excess one draw card. We really want excess four or more. We are almost there actually. So what I probably would do is you, you go find some prisoners. Maybe we take a land off their deck, especially if they're. Plays are not so fast. Yeah, we'll find some prisoners. Also, ooh, the Vorinflex is nice. It's never gonna get cast. We'll take the forest, and we will play it. That gives us Rao, which gives us a free. Yeah, we need to. S whenever you cast or copy an instant target opponent or planeswalker, so we're not sniping their creatures anytime soon. There's an argument for playing Ruta, but um, it's not quite there yet. You're messing up my equation. This ought to be good. Mission briefing. Yes, we're taking mission briefing because we have a lightning bolt on the graveyard. 
kind of sad. We could with more mana, we could increasing vengeance the lightning bolt. Mm, that's that's a bit greedy. Though X equals five is almost there, we can just vizier the menagerie. Okay, we actually are going for it. I have just the thing to take you out for good. Unfort oh, I actually have okay, we definitely want the Yeah, we definitely want the braid. Choose a player. Oh I need to oh my I need to now learn what is the combo with Rao. I know there's a combo where if you copy enough spells you can actually go you can kinda go in Oh my gosh, this is the part where I don't know how to do it, but I know I can. Anyway, experimental overload. We definitely want that because we want there are a lot of spells we really want to return. And we also set our opponent back quite a bit. Thousand Year Storm is now gonna be really brutal here, if I may say so myself. But we okay, opponent's still going for the elves. They do have a land because or they have a tree drop they have a land or they have a tree drop because it really makes no sense. Okay. It really makes no sense. I have no idea what happened there. So Yeah, let's make a Oh, we can also wreck it even further by doing it the other way around. But first we... Okay. We're gonna just... We're going to exhaust Ral. I'm very sorry. You're gonna be very tired after this. Better watch out. There's a storm brewing. In a weird way, Rao should be the. Er, er. Okay. So, definitely taking multiple choice. And. Since mana is not an issue anymore, we really want to be flexible. Yeah, we'll take Lightning Bolt. It's, it's, it's still a good face target. So if we have to do an emergency bounce, there's Oto Otowara. <laughs> I think we did... Oh, Toski! Yeah, good game, because we were going to just bounce it. Yeah, the opponent sees it. it and um, yeah, unfortunately, the, we only got the sticker emote. So, well, actually, no, we could have said the good game also. But yeah, we were going off. I, you know what? We'll take a look at the. I think there there is a there is a point of weakness to. Let's see. Yeah, there is a point of weakness to these decks. As in, there is a cert, there is a good percentage that um, re that requires a lot of um, ma mana fixing here. Our opponent was able to get the four mana. They did have the Lanoir Elves, so if the Elves survived, they would have they would have had the five drop. It would have um, well, made made things. And likewise, in in our case, when we were playing the mono green deck, we we kept in the sense because we knew we had the. We we had the early ramp as well. We also had Lucamina as a sort as a sort of ramp as as a sort of ramp to go along with it. So so if you don't hit your mana, it's a really big issue. Well, last deck, Devil's Interval. Let's see if we can let's see if we can perform the sweep. I will say that the 
most most of our wins so far have been because our opponent stumbled on the mana base. So and our that said, okay, this is a black red deck, but um, if we can hit our extra our, our fourth mana. Okay, my concern is that this is awfully slow. We, like, there are a bunch of creatures I don't want to have this early, but we'll keep. Because we have Nightmare Shepherd that can kind of combo with Solemn Simulacrum in a sense, get give us additional gas that way. We have Murderous Rider to buy us some time. And also helps that our, our opponent's deck is on the on the light side. It doesn't help that our opponent does have access to rip apart. Let's see if they rip apart the cold steel heart. No, they just run their old cold steel heart. Okay, so we're going to go for. So we really want to keep fixing lands. We can do Hedron Archive next time. Basically, I want to have some insurance in case our opponent does take out the Cold Steel Heart. And Hadron Archive is not going to fix our mana anytime soon. So yeah, it's really about hitting your mana. And you can see that the, that, uh, the decks that really want it, like Fire Song, Sunspeaker, even the Mono Green deck really wanted it, even the Green Blue deck really wanted it. The Blue Red deck had a different way to of buy of buying time early it just really consisted of um lots of lots of um, interactive spells material escort okay that one scares me when you if you give it to the right give it to the right card in hand we are in trouble we really have to hold on to this uh, murderous rider now that said we have five mana if i cast this that sets us to three mana it's probably still better to go go for this then say cast any other card although we kind of we kind of need to pressure our opponent by um kind of need to pressure our opponent a bit by taking it out at least that way, if our opponent reanimates it somehow, that's... Well, they will still get the BTB trigger. At least the nice thing about Davriel's plus one is that um, it's very innocuous. We might just end up plus one and doing the minus two right away. Still not in a position to go broker for blood. I really want to play Nightmare Shepherd, so if our opponent does take out Simulacrum, that... Um, we get uh, we get to dip our toes again. Ideally, we hit another mana. Dawn of Hope. Also note that okay, our opponent is hitting their land drops just on the slower side. Okay, they are drawing cards too. We are hitting our mana drops, but not super ideally. Oh, you don't want to mess with me. Yeah, we will play Nightmare Shepherd now. I am fairly certain the Simulacrum is going to die soon. If our point... Now there are certain... Okay, does our opponent go... Oh, Sacred Fire takes out the Davriel. Okay, that's fair. Still loading up their hand, do they? Well, they will take out Shep. They might take out Shepherd another way. Mm. No reason for us to go show stopping. In fact, there, other than just to represent the six six flying trample, there might not be a good reason for us to show stop at all. Anyway, let's drop the Hedron Archive. We can crack it for cards if we need to, but we are just using it to hold up Murderous Rider. I'm really also curious what the rest of our opponent's cards are in hand. A Star of Extinction again would be so annoying. Well, not that annoying. It's annoying enough. Yeah, and there's no other way this would have tapped. I really needed double black.
This one's actually so heavy in black now that I think of it. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can actually cast this. Get have a target creature get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So that nets us two cards right away. <clears throat> but we also have to be very careful. There are Okay, there's a Justice Strike that can cause Villas to kill itself. There is uh, Solar Blaze does the same except for our entire board. Star of Extinction also wrecks the entire board as well. Okay, opponent goes Angel of Destiny. Nice trick with the Life Link. We're gonna wait till the turn passes and. Let's see if we can... Let's see if the, the rider rides! And we have a glass zone as well. Oh, actually, we want to tap this. And tap this. We do need three... So we need three black mana no matter what. So there... So we're gonna actually just play Villis now. Probably should have waited until after combat since... Actually, also we're gonna wait as well. We don't need to draw the cards quite yet. Yeah, this was a very good target. Also, gonna be awkward to exile Villis, but we're definitely exiling Soul of Simulacrum when... Yeah. So we do still get a little bit of extra value once... Um... Also, I need to consider hitting Blast Zone X equals 2. It will take out both the Cold Steel Heart and Dawn of Hope. Opponent is really tanking right now. It is it is a tough situation I must say. Yeah, the not having that many creatures is a thing. Pony goes Fire Song Sun Speaker. Okay. They have two mana left. I'm assuming it's a burn spell that's big enough to at least take out the nightmare chef. Also, I forgot to draw extra cards. Anyway, let's see. We could just drop Rakdos the Showstopper itself. It might take out the Simulacrum, but that's fine. Yeah, we're just gonna play this now. See if it... Oh! It's Simulacrum safe! I kind of wish... Oh wow! That, yeah, that that would that would cause our opponent to flip out. <laughs> well, to be fair, our opponent might have expected for everyone, but um, yeah, read the fine print a little bit. There we go. That was actually a very fast run through Post Malone's Arena con concert. Is that fine? It's it's a really fine concert, I might add. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode of the Magic Arena Run. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Turn on notifications and whatnot. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you guys again next time. Take care. God bless. Stay safe wherever you are. Have a great weekend, everyone. Take care.